Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alum and today I'm gonna talk about some advanced building techniques in Vanilla Fort. Most of the things I'm going to show you, you can apply on multiple maps, but in general they are better at 4v4 maps than in 1v1 scenarios. Now that we're in game, I'm just gonna repeat what we talked about in the last video, which is how to build a good foundation. This technique you should already know, but it's really important, so that's why I'm doing this again. You can see that you are able to build a internal bracing just like this. This is some of the most important things to learn in the beginning, but now it gets really tricky. I'm going to show you how you actually can build a beam inside the beam. You see the structure that I built is just kinda a uh, scaffolding and by placing this really carefully you're actually able to have a beam inside the beam. So right now I have two beams that are too high and one beam that is four high. I can just highlight this with the metal right here so you can see this is a really crazy thing and helps out a lot by taking all the weight off your fort. Next thing I can show you is how you can spam wood really efficiently. You can just drag it out a little bit, as you see here, and create those little one by ones. This is also called the French wood spam. The good thing about this is that you're able to place some wood again inside of it. And by expanding with the same shape, there's multiple possibilities where you can connect wood. This is really tanky and one of the best way to spam wood in my opinion. The only downside that if you get shot with splash damage, your repair bill is so high that you most likely cannot afford it. So I really recommend to, by building this against any sorts of lasers, but not against some cannons. But in general it's really good to do a little bit of the French foot spam like this in every single game. I never regret it. So there you just see um, where it's possible to spam the wood and it's just one beautiful mess of beams. Uh, other way to build your foundations will be begin in the same way as in the first method. This method can be a little bit tricky. You want to place some background place bracing just like this from the normal squares. So you are able to connect it just by dragging it across. And now you want to connect the dots on the you want to connect the dots on the top layer. This can be really tricky, but is possible and will stay and will also be a really stable connection. Here you can see how everything should be if you're done. Another form of wood spam, I will call the Canadian lumber spam. There the goal of this sort of build is to create a lot of little one by ones which are perfectly crossed. So here you can see you are actually able to drag a one by one from the right to the left but not from top to bottom. So this is why I built this little construction so now I can have a lot of one by ones which are already crossed beamed, which is also really effective against any sort of laser damage. The problem I find with the number spam in comparison to the French wood spam is that it's much more APM heavy. So you can see I struggle to drag all the little squares down the road, but if you're done, you're actually almost better off than with the French wood spam. A 
another thing for your weapons is that you can actually build some micro doors. Instead of building big doors, which take a long time to open and a longer time to close, you can actually build a wood platform like the 1v1 and drag a door sideways. It's, it's not possible to have it straight down, but you can place some multiple doors. Just a small one and a big one like this. In this map, my sniper can still shoot the enemy's gunner and has enough height for his other weapons if he's expanding. So the micro door has almost no downside and you can still spam other big doors. This will be a much more a much better protection for your weapon. Next up, if you want to get height fast and cheap, you can actually convert your 2x2s to 3x3s like this. This will not specifically add to your stability, but is a real cheap way to get height fast. Once you're able to build your cannons, you want to build the spot above your turbines. For a cannon, you need a height of two and a half block, but you can also uh, mess it with the 52 metal. If you build a box 52 metal high, it's perfectly sized for a cannon, so you do not need to build a larger box. Same thing, just like the micro door for your sniper, you can build a micro door for your cannon. There you can just build the structure like on your turbines and place some doors like these. So here you can see the comparison to the big doors. The big doors take a long time to close, where the small doors, by being smaller, have a shorter time to close. Also, they cost less metal to build. Here you can see it really good how the small doors are closed before the big doors. This will actually save your weapon a lot if the enemy is really good with his sniper. So the third and last technique that I can recommend for building a sturdy foundation for your fort I'm just gonna delete this so you can see it a little bit better. For this type of foundation you do not want to build it like this. You actually want to deactivate your grid by pressing the G button. So you're able to place a foundation to the right and drag it up and place a second foundation in the same box to the left and drag it up. The only downside to this method is that you cannot drag it up further but it's basically really sturdy and gets the job done as well. So if you do not find the APM to drag the internal bracing up further or it's too difficult, I find this to be a really easy solution as well. A thing that I tried but I'm not able to do is to connect my two box large beam that I can place. I, I wanted to connect it to the knots that I had inside, but I was unable to. So next up I'm gonna show you how you're able to do a core swing. The build is really popular and you could already see this on multiple other videos, so I'm gonna speed the process up a little bit. The most important thing is that you have a free large beam where you can connect the rope like this. Basically just copy what I'm doing right here. <laughs> you only need to delete one beam and the core swing will always be guaranteed. The tricky thing is to not accidentally connect anything but just delete the beam. A good thing 
you, you can go back in the video and watch that I can click on the node on my core so that I can get the connection from the middle of my beam a little bit more easier. If everything's connected to the ground, you do not need the ropes anymore and you have now a perfectly placed core on the ground. Next thing you want to do is to build the cannon spots and on top of it you have your turbines. So everybody knows that if your opponents went for swarm missiles, uh, the correct counter would be building a flag for each swarm missile launcher. So right here I'm just gonna shoot the swarm missiles at my base. So here you can see how effective the flag can be. It's fully defended. The thing is, maybe you don't have the technology at hand or you do not have the resources to build a flag with metal doors. So right here is a really cheap trick you should know when dealing with swarm missiles. Once you see the red laser, you can actually expand like that and build large beams like this. Here you can see you still take a little bit of damage, but the little meat shield is a really good tip which I'll stress that you implement in your gameplay. So you can just build an antenna like that. So here for comparison, without the antenna I will take a lot more of fire damage. There you see my whole base is in flames, where before I could mitigate the damage a lot. Now for the second most popular map. Most important thing that most people forget is to cross brace your squares on top which is really important. Your turbine spot is most excellent just beneath your core where just as you see I deleted a part of my fort and by building it like this I have three perfect turbine spots. A quick tip if you are going for swarm missiles is that you can actually build where your mind should have went and just place another technology up there so that you're able to build up to nukes. Another spot for the turbine that should be mentioned is right here. This is not protected at all but in most cases it will help out really well without your enemy punishing you for building a turbine on the spot. For wood spam on a hanging fort I'm actually going to copy what I saw on the AI tournament because it was really brilliant. You need to delete this part of metal so that you can build a little bit of a scaffolding just like this. You are just able to drag the scaffolding from left to right across. This will... <laughs> Oops. This sort of uh, foundation will take a lot of shots, which normally would be your weakest point, now became your strongest wood spam. Again, I'm just going with the French wood spam because it's one of the easiest things to build if you wanna go about a wood one by one. So this would be already enough, but I'm just gonna show you that you're actually able to connect a lot of more wood and drag the foundation across like this, you can just spam however you want. So in the end it can look like this. So to protect your mind I highly recommend you building a little bit more of wood like that. 
important if you want to be really protected you can even drag it up like so. Uh, there are multiple ways on where to place your turbines on this map. You just need to replace given things by background bracing and then you have an excellent turbine spot right at the top of your base. There I highly recommend you to get the energy shield as fast as possible because of enemy minigunners. But here you see you have a really good efficiency rating and all the space below your base can now be used for cannons or other heavy weapons. So next and last way to build your turbines is something that I see the best players doing all the time but I personally do not have the APM to execute the strat perfectly. You want to hang your turbines in the back of your base. This can be achieved to building a structure like this. So here you see your turbines do not have a good efficiency rating. But you can improve the efficiency rating of your turbines by turning everything behind the metal into background bracing. So, if you're done with that, your bottom turbine actually has a 100% efficiency. Just like in the other build, you now have all the space below to place some cannons. So, right here I found it a little bit tricky to expand your turbines, but it's actually possible to get up to 9 turbines right here at the back of your base. So here you can see that I have multiple turbines with 100% efficiencies in the back of my base and they are fully protected against everything the opponent could do. So if you expand on the top, I can show you how you can build an excellent anti-air minigunner spot right here. Just as I said in the last tutorial, you do not want to build doors on gunners. But what you can use is angled wood to protect your gunners from enemy sniper shots. You just need background bracing like so, so your gunners are able to shoot downwards. The same thing can be applied on the bottom part of your base. So if you open it up with background bracing, your gunners are able to shoot up. By having gunners on top and gunners on bottom, the enemy sniper has it much more difficult to aim correctly, so I highly recommend it. The spot directly under your core should go to an other weapon than your anti-air. Same thing with the angled wood and the background bracing can be used to place some mortars. Mortars on a map like this will surprise a lot of people. And with the angled wood you are you have a really cheap protection. On this spot you just need 40% to hit the enemy perfectly. So in the map Abyss, I want to show you one or two little tips. The most basic thing to get your next mine is just by building a connection down here like this. So what you see a lot of noobs trying to build the connection, uh, how they build a connection is by building something like that. This is really bad, don't do that, it costs way too much resources. I'm gonna show you the proper way. So the standard way to get the connection up there is by getting your background bracing and building two knots, just like this. And bam, you're on the top, you can just place this little triangle. Here go your mines. 
So right here I just place a little bit of protection for your mines. But if you want to place your turbines on top, you can actually delete this and just get the turbines like this with 100% efficiency. A little quick tip I want to show that if you are connecting your fort like this it costs you a lot more energy. You can actually just take a beam down to the already existing node which will allow you to hide your technology building right there. So if you are trying to build a protection how do you want to build against rockets or EMPs? I personally try to build the biggest structure possible. So I will just I will build a big structure in the front, connect them down like that and just repeat the process. So right now if the enemy rockets hit me, the splash damage is so far away from my core that I will not take any damage. And because they are really big structures, they are cheap to repair. On this map what you can do is to build a lot of gunner spots like this. So you can go really far up and really far down to place your anti-air, which I also really recommend you to do. So that concludes this quite a long guide on how to build in forts. The next videos will be about how you can get out your weapons as fast as possible. And this will be some quite niche builds which you can implement in every map. As always, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and I see you next time.